Okay, now in this video I want to talk a little bit about um, how a synchronous motor uh, works. So to do that first, I've got to get some power on. So we'll just turn on the uh, data acquisition power even though I'm not going to be doing any data acquisition right now. And the three phase mains. Now. Oh, just notice this on Prime Move, it should be on Dyno. Now initially, uh, the lab guide tells you to put it on maximum load, excitation on, and RL is 220, sub 29 ohms, which means all these are on, and this is on minimum. And you'll find that when you uh, turn this up to full load, the motor sounds terrible. Uh, <coughs> Now I'll do that to prove the point. Now, that actually did start. Now normally under load, uh, you'll find that <coughs> that won't kick in and it will drag out and drag out and go very slowly and it won't go to synchronous speed. Um, now, if, if this was actually unloaded, you'll find that, okay, I wind it up, and after a brief... After a brief delay, uh, the motor pulls in sync and runs in sync. Uh, in actual fact, though, the way you should start up an induction motor is, uh, is not loaded and excitation off. And inside the squirrel cage motor, Sorry, inside the uh, synchronous motor is uh, a wound rotor component and a small squirrel cage like what you would see in an induction motor. The idea of the uh, squirrel cage is that when you run it up uh, to full power, uh, the rotor runs at a synchronous speed which is usually about 30 or 40 RPM slower than synchronous speed. Uh, and then it's ready to for the excitation wanting to be energized. So I'll just demonstrate that. So, so I think I think when it's close to synchronous speed, this actually is is fairly correct. It's only at lower speeds it's out. So basically, this is showing 1437 RPM. Uh, and now when I throw the excitation on, you can hear it jump up to speed. And now it's uh, locked in sync at 1500 RPM. Now at the synchronous motor, once it's running in sync, you'll find that you can load it up and it will maintain the same speed until it reaches a certain braking torque. Now in this case, the field winding excitation is strong enough that I can't reach that braking torque. But if I added more resistance into the circuit, so for example I could wind this up to the opposite extreme, and now we'll just see what happens here. Again, I haven't reached the braking torque. Started adding more load here. Okay, so it seems like I cannot uh, get to the breakdown torque of this motor. But normally what would happen is that as you reduce the excitation current in this winding, the motor, the magnetic strength of that motor will decrease until a point where that torque will break and it will lose synchronism. So the demonstration quite, didn't quite pan out the way I wanted to. Um, at least some of the principles there I've managed to explain. So thank you for your time and attention.